It is one of the hottest topics right now artificial intelligence. Yes, yeah, scientists and researchers across the nation work to develop this technology. Those at Purdue are changing the way people perceive AI. WRTV's Amber Grigley explains the approach they are taking to implement this technology in our everyday lives. You know, for decades, speculation about artificial intelligence has been reserved for science fiction movies. But fiction is getting closer to becoming reality, all thanks to computer scientists at Purdue University. And artificial intelligence is getting smarter, giving us a better idea what will be possible in the future. That's me. That's me moving. That's me smiling. I mean, people have been building AI or artificial intelligence technologies for, for a very long time, but it's only the last few years it has taken uh, it has changed the landscape entirely in, in, in this computer science or technology. And by the looks of it, it's here to stay. We've saturated a lot of these mathematical models, a lot of these structures we're building. Maybe we are reaching a tipping point of what we can do with AI. Anika Barrow says AI will continue to get more elaborate as technology advances. This robot will actually look like a real dog. I mean, eventually something, if it becomes indistinguishable from reality, then that's probably a stopping point. A stopping point he's hoping to break through by helping AI comprehend human emotions, a task that has not been done yet. Uh, it doesn't interact with humans as humans do with other people. Uh -huh. uh, so we are hoping to bring all of these aspects of humans, uh, human behaviors, human emotion into these, these kind of robots. Purdue has already introduced robotic delivery like this. And this robotic dog is next on its list of AI accomplishments. Many researchers across the world are working on AI technologies. Mm -hmm. I'm not the first. I, was, I won't be the last, right? There will be many people working on this. But there are very few people working on making sure that five years from now, the human element still remains. Across the way from the computer science building. It's like any other system that comes along. It's, it's going to radically change what happened, but it's not going to change everything. English professor Bradley Dilger is exploring chat GPT. So there's two parts of it. There's this machine learning part, which is figuring out how language works. And then there's a database which is all the stuff that they put into it. ChatGPT is becoming more useful in classrooms, like assisting with research and papers. Like the amount of stuff that you did in college and I did in college, like the amount of time it took us to look stuff up was way more. But there has been some pushback and concerns that it might create learning barriers for students. ChatGPT is like the 10th thing that was going to kill writing. Right, like the first thing that was going to kill writing was was printing because we'd have too much writing, and then the second thing that was going to kill writing was typing because we didn't have handwriting anymore, and then it was going to be spell check that was going to kill writing, and then it was going to be the internet that was going to kill it. None of those things killed it. Dilger says it's not taking away the ability to teach and learn. Instead, it's evolving the standards. It's up to us as instructors to make sure that we keep the standards up for quality, right, and that we use all these changes. Changes that come with putting trust into technology, an obstacle we are all adapting to while navigating through this phenomenon. So that trust is a two-way process, I think. Uh, I mean, for the robot, trust is how to optimally solve a problem. For a human, is how to accept these things in the next 10 years. Now, Bera says eventually they want to explore using AI to assist with mental health. He says they recently received a small grant working with Community Health Behavioral Center to incorporate and implement AI into their workflow. I'm Amber Grigley, WRTV.